Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English. Now, we begin the year looking at something super duper important. Despite all the content I make, despite all the work that I read, one of the biggest issues that I keep finding in the work of students is the ability or even inability to write a successful paragraph. How do you actually put a paragraph together bit by bit? Now, I've made videos in the past looking at pretzel, which is the paragraph structure that I follow. However, I think just giving P-R-T-E-Z-E-L is not enough. In this video, guys, I'm going to explore each part of that paragraph in as much detail as possible, but at the same time, making it super easy for you guys to use in your own work. Now, I have to say something though just to be very, very clear. There's some teachers or some people who are really protective over their paragraphs. Guys, I don't really care if you use pretzel, if you use Peter, if you use PL, if you use P, whatever paragraph structure you use. I'm not one of them teachers that is protective over pretzel. You do whatever you gotta do, but there is a caveat to that statement. Whatever paragraph structure you are using, you must make sure that it makes it easy for you to tick off AO1, AO2, and AO3. If not, then the paragraph structure that you're using is wasting your time and making life difficult for you. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna sit here and say that pretzel is the best thing since sliced bread. It's just what I use because I find that it helps students to tick off AO1, tick off AO2, tick off AO3 if they stick to the taught structure. In my opinion, P, Peel and Peter are far too basic, especially for the grade seven, eight and nine students. But remember guys, the exam board don't care about pretzel. They don't care about Peel. The examiner isn't gonna sit there with your work and do P, R, T, E. They're gonna do AO1, they're gonna check AO2 and they're gonna check a03. I just want to repeat that whatever paragraph structure that you end up following, please make sure it makes life easy for you to take off the mark scheme and doesn't make life difficult. Now in this video guys, I'm going to be going over pretzel step by step. First, I'll go over what pretzel stands for. Then I'll go over what you must do for each section of pretzel. And then on the side, I will write out a paragraph using the structure step by step by step. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to use this structure for pretty much 80% of your exam. Pretzel guys, it works for English literature. So when it comes to the Shakespeare question, the 19th century question and the modern text question, it doesn't work for pretzel, sorry, for poetry, how it is because poetry you must compare. It works for English language, paper one, question two, paper one, question three, paper one, question four, and it works for paper two, question number three and number four. Which is quite a lot of questions, if you ask me. So the day you can master how to write one paragraph when it comes to pretzel, all you're doing is repeat, repeat, repeat for the other questions. Now in this video, guys, I will be focusing on how to write pretzel for an English literature essay. So guys, now I'm gonna to switch to the board and then we will begin going over the paragraph step by step. I'm gonna to try to make this video as clear and easy to follow as possible. So to begin with, when it comes to the pretzel paragraph structure, for a typical essay in English literature, we are aiming for four pretzel paragraphs on an average of 10 minutes per paragraph. Now let's start from the top. Every single paragraph, guys, that <coughs> every single paragraph that we do, like every essay in the world, begins with what? Every essay begins with a point. Now everyone says to students, you must use a point in your writing. You must make sure your writing has a point. But how do you actually create a point? Because the amount of students that I see that don't know how to get their essay started. So there are a few steps that I would like to try and follow. The first step, guys, is I would like you all to create a basic point. A very, very basic 
A very, very straightforward point. So for example, guys, imagine we were doing an essay on Macbeth. My basic point on Macbeth could be, for example, let's do Macbeth is presented as a powerful man. That's a very, very straightforward, very, very basic point. I've not said anything revolutionary. However, it's enough for my essay to get going. So now I've made my basic point. I can't stop here. The next step of my point is I must explain the point. I must then, guys, explain the point. So for example, I'll explain now why Macbeth is a powerful man. So Macbeth is presented as a powerful man. This is because he is greatly feared on the battlefield. Part number two done. I started with the basic point. Macbeth is a powerful man. Step number two, I explain my point. Now guys, step number three. At this point, I would like you all to please add some synonyms into your writing. Now, for example, at this point, I may elaborate further now and say, Macbeth is presented as a powerful man. This is because he's greatly feared on the battlefield. He is a powerful, dominant, and assertive, character now the moment you add your synonyms at this point i would like you to just sprinkle the way salt bay sprinkled guys i just want you to sprinkle some context at this part of the text just mention it we're not going to explain it we're not going to elaborate that we'll do later for now we're just going to sprinkle some context some keywords he is a powerful, dominant, and, assert and assertive character, reinforcing the behavior of a patriarchal man. So, I've given my basic point. I've explained the point. I've added my synonyms. I've sprinkled my context. And finally, guys, the way we end our paragraph is then by introducing the quote. What evidence will I use to support my point? So all I will say, guys, is this can be seen in Act 1 when. And I pause there. I've now introduced my quote. Now, guys, remember one thing, and this is very, very important. Your point is important. Why is your point important, guys? Because your point comes under A01. Assessment objective number one marks you on the quality of your point. Now, what will the majority of students do? The majority of students, guys, what they will do in their writing is they will say, Macbeth is presented as a powerful man and they stop because they don't know how to elaborate and I don't blame you guys because it's difficult how do you elaborate on your point what do you do with it now the reason I start with the basic point is because I don't want anyone getting stuck in the very beginning of their writing I don't want students up and down the country not knowing how to begin an essay so just start with a basic point start with points that you know other people will say so Macbeth is presented as a powerful man but it's what we do next that makes it unique when you explain your point you show the examiner that you have a deeper awareness of the text that you are talking about this is because he is greatly feared on the battlefield now we're adding synonym he is a powerful dominant and assertive character reinforcing the behavior of a patriarchal man I'm just sprinkling, guys, just the way Sotbay does. I'm just sprinkling some context 
for two reasons. Number one, because I want the mark for good subject terminology. And number two, I want to make sure that my point looks and reads in as much detail as possible. And then guys, I introduce the quote. This can be seen in act one when. Now always try to give the act. Also try to give the scene. Now really guys, I should have written this can be seen in act one, scene two, because my quote is from act one, scene two. I'll add that in a second. And that's your point done. Follow these steps. Now in the past, what do I say to you guys? Just do a point. And I expect students to go from there to there. But in hindsight, after reflecting, I think this middle part is super important because it teaches you how you actually write a point. Okay, so that's how we are doing our point. Now, once we have done our point, we then move on to the next part of our paragraph. So guys, the second part of AO1 is your reference. And these are the two things that are marked upon when it comes to AO1. It's the quality of your point and the quality of your reference. Now, how do you know that you have a good, sorry guys, how do you know that you have a good reference? <clears throat> first thing guys, first thing that your reference must do, your reference must prove the point. That's the first thing and the most basic thing that your reference must do. Now, I've said that Macbeth is a powerful man. So my reference, my quote, better prove how Macbeth is a powerful man. What I don't want is my reference talking about how Macbeth is getting his head chopped off at the end. That doesn't prove my point. So the first thing, guys, is your reference must prove the point. And the second thing, guys, your reference, it must include a technique. The second part is super important, guys. Your, me your, your reference, it must have a technique. This can be a language technique. This can be a structural technique. Because later, guys, when we do AO2, AO2 is analyzing the effect of language and structure and so on. So if I pick a quote that hasn't got a technique, I've kind of shot myself in the foot because I've kind of ruined my paragraph because I don't really know what I'm supposed to talk about next. So, guys, the quote... I shall be using is the one that says he has seen them from the knee to the chaps. This can be seen in Act 1, Scene 2. Learn that Macbeth unseamed them from Macbeth unseamed to the chaps. Does my quote prove my point? Yes. Has it got a technique? Yes, it has got a technique. And that's all we are doing, guys, when it comes to our reference. Tick and tick. Then we move on to the third part of the paragraph, guys. And now we begin to move on into A02 territory. Now, the third part of the paragraph, guys, is we must identify our technique. And this part of the paragraph, guys, is very simple. From the quote, guys, from the quote, we must identify the language or structural technique. Very simple. All we're going to do is mention it. Now, we're not going to do what some students do and say things like, the writer uses many, many language devices. One of these language devices because we're just wasting words for the sake of wasting words. All we're going to say is this. When we learn that Macbeth unseamed them from the nave to the chaps. Let's just pick out a hyperbole. The writer has used a hyperbole. Done. I've picked my technique and now I have done the PRT part of the paragraph. This next part of the paragraph is the most important part. And this is when we have to now explain the effect. Now, what are we explaining the effect of? 
we're explaining the effect of the technique. Now, a lot of the time, guys, I find that students, they just kind of, again, try to wing this part of their writing. The first thing we're going to do, guys, step number one, is we will explain the basic effect. We're just going to get going. We're going to give a basic effect just so we can start this part of the paragraph and that we're not stuck or wasting time in our exam. We're just going to get going. Um, here the writer has used a hyperbole which illustrates, I'm going to give a very basic guy straightforward effect, how Macbeth has no mercy for his opponents on the battlefield. So how Macbeth has no mercy for his opponents on the battlefield. Now what do I do? Step number two, to make my effect detail. I'm going to explain the effect of the first effect. I call this explaining the effect of the effect of the effect. So I said that Macbeth has no mercy for his opponents on the battlefield. Now what does, what does this do? What's the effect of Macbeth having no mercy? Let's go for it guys. As a result, he becomes a character who has no fear of anyone or anything. He seems like a man, seem like a man possessed with the sole objective of killing. And that's why I said was the effect of my first effect. So the first effect was that Macbeth is merciless. Now what's the effect of Macbeth coming across as merciless? The effect, guys, of Macbeth being merciless is that he becomes fearless. He's not scared of any opponent. He's not scared of anyone or anything. He becomes possessed um, with this notion, with this idea of just hunting for the kill, um, just living for the kill. Now, I go again, guys. I try to do it one more time. Let's see if I can. So the third step, guys, is I explain the effect, effect of the second effect. So I said that he becomes fearless and that he becomes possessed with this constant need of killing and killing and killing. This Macbeth must become like stone. Emotionless, unable to feel any sympathy for his actions. And then, guys, I end it by making sure I link back to the point. These characteristics ensure immense power for Macbeth. A man who is fearless and emotionless is a man impossible 
to the fee. And that, guys, is how you explain the effect. Look at where my effect began, guys. Here, the writer has used a hyperbole, which illustrates how Macbeth has no mercy for his opponents on the battlefield. From there, I carried on explaining the effect and I took it further and further. Try to do this, guys, at least three times. Try to explain the effect, then explain the effect, and then explain the effect. One, two, three. By doing it three times, guys, it's a nice bulletproof method of ensuring that you will get marks for detail. Now, there's probably many other ways of explaining the effect, but I find this the most straightforward method of ensuring you're able to explain the effect. Now, always make sure you link everything back to your point, because this will make sure that whatever you said over here is on task. Because if you struggle to link everything back to your point, then somewhere over here, you've possibly gone off task. So guys, so far, when it comes to our paragraph, we have done P, R, T, and E. We've done the first four steps of our paragraph. Now we must do the Z, the E, and the L, and then we have a complete, fully focused, thorough and detailed paragraph. So what comes after P, R, T, E? Next, guys, we have the zooming in. Now, the reason I zoom in is because zooming in allows you to get the mark for detail if it's done correctly. Now, what do we do when it comes to zooming in? Guys, the first thing that we do when it comes to zooming in is we go back to the quote. Our initial quote. So our quote was, he unseamed him from the nave to the chap. Now, we can do one of two things. We can either pick another device in the same quote or we can either pick a word. So this would be guys a noun or an adjective or a verb or an adverb. You decide what you feel comfortable picking from your chosen quote. So I'll now do my one guys. This power is further exemplified, which basically means shown, via, which means through, via the verb unseen. Done. I've gone back to the quote and I've picked a verb. Done. Tick and tick. And then we go one more time. We go back guys and then we explain the effect again. Now this time, our explanation of the effect doesn't have to be in as much detail as the first effect of the word. So in my instance guys, I have to explain the effect of the verb Uh, unseamed. So let's go for it guys. The verb here highlights how Macbeth does not fight like the ordinary soldier. Rather a blow or let's be even more specific, a single blow from his sword leaves the enemy mangled and unable to ever be repaired. And then guys, if you can, at this point, we do it one more time. We explain the effect of the first 
effect. This physical power coupled with his fearless mindset ensures that Macbeth at the start of the play is a soldier unlike any other and then guys all we do is we end our paragraph with the L and this is our link and what we do in our link guys is we link back to the point and my point was that Macbeth is powerful who has unmatched power amongst his peers and that is a pretzel paragraph complete so if we go back to where we began guys I've now done P-R-T-E-Z E and L and there you have a fully complete pretzel paragraph let's go over it one more time guys i began with a point this was to get the marks for a01 i began with the basic point macbeth is presented as a powerful man then i explained the point this is because he's greatly feared on the battlefield then i added my synonyms he's a powerful dominant and assertive character reinforcing the behavior of a patriarchal man and then i introduced a quote this can be seen in act one scene two when we learn that Macbeth unseamed them from the nave to the chaps. Then I give my reference. Now my reference has two purposes. Number one, it proves a point, And number two, it must include a technique. So I said here, the writer has used a hyperbole, which illustrates how Macbeth has no mercy for his opponents on the battlefield. I've now given my first basic effect, which is that he has no mercy. I then explain the effect of that effect. So what is the effect of Macbeth having no mercy. As a result, he becomes a character who has no fear of anyone or anything. He seems like a man possessed with the sole objective of killing. That's the second effect. So what's the effect of Macbeth having one sole objective? The fact that he's fixated with killing. It shows us that to do this, Macbeth must become like stone. He must become emotionless. Unlike, sorry, unable to feel any sympathy for his actions. And then guys, I link it back to my point. These characteristics ensure immense power for Macbeth, a man, uh, sorry, a man who is fearless and emotionless is a man impossible to defeat. That is the first four points of the paragraph done. The P, the R, the T, and the E. I then zoomed in, guys, I then zoomed in. And when it came to zooming in, what was I focusing on here, guys? I made sure I went back to the same quote and I picked either another device or I picked a word. This can be a noun or an adjective or a verb or an adverb. So I said here, this power is further exemplified by the verb unseemed. The verb here highlights how Macbeth does not fight like the ordinary soldier. So now I've given the first effect. Or rather, a single blow from his sword leaves the enemy mangled and able to be ever repaired. I then gave the effect. What's the effect? That Macbeth can literally chop you up in half and leave you absolutely destroyed. I now did what I think is a good thing to do. I'm linking my second effect to the first one. This physical power coupled with his fearlessness, which is what I said earlier, ensures that Macbeth at the start of the play is a soldier unlike any other. A soldier, now I link everything, who has unmatched power amongst his peers. And there you have a full pretzel paragraphs explained step by step now you may be wondering sir there's something missing here where is your AO3 now we don't do AO3 for every single paragraph hence I haven't included it here this is the structure that we would use for every basic 
pretzel paragraph. However, when we include context, my advice is always to include context in one or two of your four paragraphs. And when we include context, guys, context always, guys, context always comes after the first effect. So we always include context when we do it after the first effect. And it would go, guys, therefore, right over here before you zoom in. But we only do it once or twice in the entire essay. Over time, over time, there shouldn't be a need for this stuff. Because if you're following pretzel, you should have practiced it so much that over time, you're, you know already, okay, I give my point, I explain the point, I add some synonyms. It's like a, it's like a mantra in your head that you know step by step what pretzel requires. But I feel as though this helps you produce a pretzel paragraph. Now, again, guys, I have to emphasize, whether you do pretzel or peel or pita or pebble or potato, try to have something in the middle to help you write. Because peel or pita or peel or pretzel by itself, in my experience over the years, isn't enough. I've only just started giving this middle section um, for each stage of the paragraph. Guys, I hope it helped. I hope it helped. Do practice this structure. Do use this structure. And I hope you're able to get success from this paragraph structure in your exams. Because that is why I make these videos. As always, guys, it's been a pleasure. It's been Mr. Everything English.